I truly despise this game, but I will try to be as fair as possible. Part 1. Gameplay The parkour gameplay is very smooth, for the most part. But the more you play, the more you see that you're on guardrails and when you try to deviate a little bit, you'll get punished. So here are some basic negatives about the parkour. When you're hanging to a wall, and depending on the camera, you'll have to press either D plus jump or S plus jump in order to jump from the wall. Sometimes the camera will make your wall run and basically insta-kill you, which is kind of annoying. Sometimes you'll jump from a high distance and then you'll survive, and sometimes you'll just jump from a low distance that you think that you'll be able to survive, but you die anyway. Some obstacles are counterintuitive if you play the other three games. For example, if you use the pillar, the prince goes to the opposite side, unlike the other games where you have to spin two times in order to jump to the other side. This cost me a lot of deaths in the early part of the game, but hey, this is just one of the things that I basically hated. Another thing that is counterintuitive is the jumping on the walls in order to run on them. In the other games you have a button for wall running. Bizarrely you still have to defend with the wall running button and also move levers with it, so it's a little bit confusing why they didn't make a button for it. In this game the new addition is dials. Some of them are creative with the ice and fire dials, you just press E on them. They act like the rings that you press R on. The green ones makes the prince run on walls automatically and you'll have to press A or D button in order to drive him away from the obstacles. Sometimes the edges are a bit uncharitable but that's just whatever. Since uh, there is no actually dead state in this game. If you die you just get uh, swapped by Alika. It's kind of annoying to be honest. And the fourth dial is the yellow one which makes the prince and his companion fly and you have to WSD in order to avoid the colliding with buildings. I find the dials fine, neither good nor bad, they're kind of fun additions to the game. The combat however I don't like it, it's not as fluid as the exploration aspect of it. My favorite boss was the king since in order to win against him you had to use the environment in comparison to the other three bosses. Also like the combat with Elika's father, uh, the combos were kinda annoying, but I don't know, it feels unfinished. The 1000 collectibles were annoying, since you had to backtrack in order to find them all. It felt like the cubes from the PS2 game Transformers. And also I found the progression of levels bizarre, instead of going in one area and finishing it, you had to collect a certain amount of collectibles in order to proceed to the ending. You need to be able to get two dials per area and sometimes you kinda go to one area and they talk, they talk, they talk. You go to another area, they talk, they talk, they talk and you kinda forget what the story is even about, what the boss's motivations are and etc etc. Another thing that I hated was the T to talk button. It's It was insanely stupid since it holds the game to give you a story or annoying tips for simple puzzles that you can solve easily. Like all of the puzzles in this game are easy, I don't... nobody needs guide for them. Also I hate how one second you're running really fast and then the next second, oh you have to talk. And then after you talk, you have to pre press again. T to talk. Just make it a cutscene, Jesus Christ. So to summarize, the parkour and exploration is a total like 7 out of 10. I'm throwing random numbers, the combat is like a 4 out of 10. And the tit to talk button is a 0 out of 10. But since most of the game is parkour, I can see myself giving everything like a 6, I guess. Part 2. The story. The story is kind of terrible, but also kind of mediocre overall. I like the prince and Elika, but outside of them, there is nothing real here. The story is very bare bones. Also, I kind of find it insane that Ubisoft kept the ending of this game a console exclusive. I have no idea why you would do that. Absolute scum behavior. But to summarize the story, basically the prince is a tomb raider who hit a jackpot and he's carrying his plunderers on a donkey. By the way, that donkey's name is Farah and I hate that shit, but I, I don't want to spend half an hour on this shit. I found it annoying when I was 13, I find it annoying now. Anyway, he gets lost in the desert and basically ends up finding uh, the kingdom that Elika is a princess in. Elika got resurrected after a fall that she had and her father basically made a deal with Satan who will destroy the world. Great stuff. 
whatever. The prince and Elika are tasked to purify the land and basically gel Satan with the help of her Christmas powers. There are four bosses in total, the hunter had so little personality I don't even remember anything about him. The plague master wanted to be immortal but he dies. The king wanted to serve his people but they are gone. And the lady wanted to tempt the prince or something. They weren't that deep of characters. Each and every one of the bosses basically propped up the prince and Elika as characters. In the end of the game you purify everything, you defeat the smoke monster from Lost, but Elika dies and the prince goes to the same shit her father did. But then the prince feels bad and basically it goes through the same shit that her father had to go through in order to save uh, Elika and basically doom the world. The end. For PC that is. For console you play a bit more, the world doesn't actually end, but hey you wouldn't know that because it's only for console. So if you're a PC player, just fuck you I guess. By the way the game ends with Elika being mad at the prince, uh, you doom the world in order to save her and it basically ends in a cliffhanger which is kind of worse than the ending if you think about it. But yeah, in total, the prince and Elika have a lot of fun dialogue throughout the game. It's very smooth. Sometimes it's a little bit cringy. Sometimes the tooltips take away from it. But hey, it's kind of fun. Tit talk was terrible, by the way. They should have made everything into cutscenes or basically made her talk while they were parkouring. But outside of the writing, it's kind of fun. So the story is kind of a 3 out of 10, the characters aka the prince and Elika are kind of 6 out of 10. I don't know, like a 4 out of 10 in total, whatever. Part 3, the visuals. Okay, I'm not gonna stay here for hours and talk about the visuals because I can, because the visuals are kind of incredible. The way they adapted the concept art into the game is impeccable, uh, the best I've seen ever, because this was 2008 and the visuals are quite good. There are self shaded models. This must have taken so much time and effort to make this. It's kind of incredible. The sound is also very good. I don't care. I like it. I like the sound. The visuals are incredible. A lot of uh, work came into it. Also find it a little bit overboard in terms of making two maps per area. One corrupted, one free of corruption. It's a visual treat, but I think they could have improved the fighting instead of making so many areas. I mean, they could have literally skipped the first boss area and basically made three areas and just focused a little bit more on the fighting of the game. But hey, that's just me, whatever. But in the end of the day, pretty colors don't make a good game good. They improve a bad game. And in this case, I believe that this is a really, really bad game with some amazing visuals and some really good parkour gameplay. So yeah, this is my review. It's a bit hectic. It's a little bit short. It's a little bit whatever. I don't want to play this game anymore, by the way. <laughs> I'm going to release uh, this review today. I played it yesterday and it's in my head. It kind of offended me and I had to make this. I'm sorry if this video is kind of all over the place. GG. Bye bye. <laughs> Suck my...